So this question says, which of the following expressions is equivalent to this expression here? So the strategy that I love to use here is called plug in your own number. It is by no means the only way to solve this. In fact, we could definitely also use or alternatively use a strategy that I like to call simplify. But in this case, our simplification would be of the answer choices Right? In each case, each of these initial terms does not have a denominator. So if I were to find a common denominator being x minus 3 um, for the left side of the expression and then combine the two expressions together, I would find the correct answer that matches my original expression there. So that's kind of a, a talk through of how to do it in a more traditional sense. But plugging your own number is one of my favorite strategies because it's very easy to identify when to use it. And that is anytime you have variables in the answer choices and in the question, in this case being the term X. So here's how we use it. So I'm going to first of all set up my own number or create a number for X. I'm going to say that X is, what do I want X to be? I'm going to say X equals 4. I'm going to say X equals 4 because I see that I have an x minus 3 in my denominators, and I would love to just turn that into a 1, right? You could choose any number you want. So if x equals 4, my next step is to then plug that 4 into the original expression, which would give me 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 5 all over 4 minus 3. Again, we know that that denominator is going to be, just be 1. 4 squared is 16, 2 times 4 is 8, so it becomes minus 8, 16 minus 8 is 8, and then minus 5, 8 minus 5 is 3. So end up with 3 over 1 or just 3. So basically what I'm saying is when x equals 4, the solution to my question is 3. So now the next step, right, so step 1, step 2, the next step is to plug that same Four into my answer choices. So here's answer choice A. Instead of x minus 5, I'd have 4 minus 5, minus 20 over, again, 4 minus 3. 4 minus 5 is just negative 1. 4 minus 3 is just positive 1. So, and 20 over 1 is just 20, right? So there's no need for that 1 down there. So I'd have negative 1 minus 20, which obviously does not equal positive 3. So A is out. That's how fast we can get through this. Answer choice B, do the same thing. 4 minus 5 minus 10 over, again, 4 minus 3, which is 1. So I'm going to just call this minus 10 to save some space instead of calling it 10 over 1. So 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 10 equals negative 11. So B is also not the correct answer because negative 11 does not equal positive 3. Choice C, x plus 1. So I'd have 4 plus 1 minus 8 over 1. Again, so you, hopefully you're seeing why it was valuable for me to choose x equals 4. In this case, I completely remove the fraction in my last term in each of these cases. So I just have four plus one minus eight. So four plus one is five. Five minus eight is negative three, which is not equal to positive three. So C is also gone. Let's try choice D. And we have four plus one minus two. And then four plus one is five. Five minus two is three. That matches the three that I got from the original question, and therefore choice D is the best answer here.